Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another YouTube video. It is your boy, Pollux the Wise, and I hope you guys are doing absolutely frog and splendid as we dive into another Kingdom Rush YouTube video. And in today's episode, like I mentioned previously, in the last tier list video that we did, I was going to be making another tier list based on the secondary towers and their abilities or upgrades, if you will, as well. So that is what this tier list is about. Uh, for those of you who seem to have a slight issue with the way that I order my tier lists, as far as the actual tiers are concerned, S+, plus, S, and such, uh, please understand that I still don't really give a shit. It's my tier list. I'm going to name the tiers whatever I want to name them. If I want to name a Booger Eater or Nose Picker, I could do that. If I want to name it Dipshit, I could do that. But I'm not going to for obviously practical reasons. But in any case, let's go ahead and get started. So... First ability on today's list. Oh, and before we continue, I would just like to point out, there's not going to be every... <laughs> How do I word this? There's not going to be every tower's upgrades included on this tier list. So in other words, things such as the Sunray, that one's kind of a little bit self-explanatory as far as what it does, but it's difficult to kind of gauge its effectiveness on this tier list. There's... Certain exceptions is what I'm saying that we're not going to be including on today's list. Any case, let's go ahead and get started. So, full mithril jacket. Obviously increases the damage of each projectile from the Dwarven Bastions by a considerable amount. It basically makes these guys super, super buffed, uh, you know, musketeer garrisons. But if they were dwarves instead of musketeers. And if they were carrying way bigger, way higher damaging guns. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite upgrades in the entire franchise, just as far as secondary towers is concerned. Super, super strong. On the high end, I believe it deals like upwards of 150 plus damage per shot. And if you buff this thing with, say, something like, you know, the Falconer ability, yeah, I think you can kind of understand where this is going. This ability does not cost that much gold to max out, and it is a passive ability that affects every single attack. It's absolutely broken, in my opinion. It's going straight into s plus tier. Explosive Keg. Okay, as if the regular attacks weren't strong enough, now let's just add on AoE. It's basically a weaker version of the shrapnel ability from the Musketeer Garrison. Honestly, I feel like this entire secondary tower, despite its rather unique design as opposed to the Musketeer Garrison, it's just been heavily inspired by it, in my personal opinion. Both abilities, um, you know... Very, very strong uh, for the amount of gold that you're paying for them. And the cooldown is respectable, too. Um, but do I think that this is game-breaking? Am I going to get this before I get something such as, like, a Dwarp or a Battle Mecha T200? No, not necessarily. I think that there are slightly better options, but I think this is still a very strong ability overall. Definitely worth using. Especially against something like, say, a Myrmidon or a Saurian Savants. It's just excellent. So we're going to go ahead and put that in A tier. Next up, we have Mithril Armor. So as if the bullets and the explosive kegs weren't enough, now we've got Mithril Armor. Basically, kind of a weaker version of Shield of Valor, if you ask me. There's two tiers to this ability, if I remember correctly. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below, please. Do I think it's okay? Yeah. Is it great? Not really, to be honest. I don't think it's useless. But this is something that I'm not going to bother buying unless I have literally nothing better to buy. I'm going to put this a B tier. It's not like it does nothing, but it's questionable at best. Now we've got Mithril Hammers. Pretty cheap to upgrade, but still more expensive than the double axe upgrade for the Barbarian Meat Hall, and the damage increase is significantly nerfed. Not really sure that it's worth it, to be honest. Again, it's... Not entirely useless, but its overall effectiveness is questionable. I'm going to put it at B tier as well. Dwarf Wiser. Is that how you pronounce this uh, ability? The first part's easy, but then the second part, W-E-I-S-E-R. Wiser. How would you guys pronounce that? Let me know down in the comment section below. Dwarf Wiser basically allows these dwarves, when their health goes below 100, to heal themselves by a supposedly substantial amount. I'm not going to lie. In... The second level that you can use this ability to begin with anyways, which is Dark Light Depths, this ability is just straight up useless. Because at that point, 100 
plus damage from a Saurian Death Coil shot, I mean, <laughs> it's going to basically insta-kill these guys. It doesn't matter if you give them healing. And in the other level, yeah, I guess it does make somewhat of a slight difference against certain enemy types. Bird guards, darters, night scales in particular, that's what all comes to mind when I think of this ability. Just giving them that little bit of extra edge to stay in melee combat alive a little bit longer. But overall, still a very uh, subpar ability in my own personal opinion. I would say that this is F tier, personally. Next, we've got Rapid Reload. So this increases the DPS of the Pirate Watchtower in the level known as Port Tortuga. I think it's decent. Do I think it's great? Mm, not really, to be honest. But with that being said, I do feel as if if you're only relying on like the Pirate Watchtowers to begin with, you're doing something wrong. But that being said, there are people who love pain and decide to do insane challenges that probably only involve just the Pirate Watchtowers or little else besides that. So with that in mind, I would say that this is still somewhat decent. Just not crazy insane. Let's go with B tier on this. Parrot Bombers. You can get up to two of these things. So 20 to 40 damage per parrot. So that's 40 to 80 at max. Cooldown's about two and a half seconds. You're paying a considerable amount of gold for these things. To put it into perspective, it would be more efficient for you to get a level 2 artillery tower, and it would be cheaper, as opposed to just grabbing the tier 1 of this ability. Now, with that being said, tier 2, for its price tag, I mean, it's okay. Not great, but still okay. Again, really difficult to kind of judge this one. If you're just going for a single tier of this, although why you would do that is beyond me. I mean, it's just straight up terrible, but... Two tiers, I'd say it's okay. Um, again, it's there's a lot of very mediocre abilities on today's list, but we're going to put this a B tier for now. Lightning Strike. So this is for the Dark Forge Tower that appears in the first Halloween level of Frontiers. I absolutely love that tower, by the way. Just in terms of design, voice lines, everything, this is just... <sighs> I'm not sure why I'd use this term, but it's, it's amazing. It's almost orgasmic. I love this tower. As far as this ability is concerned, not only does it increase the damage of the Dark Forge, but it also extends the number of targets that it can hit. So it's a two for one. Pretty cheap to max out to. Definitely worth every penny of upgrading it. Is it game-breaking? Eh, no. I'm going to say A tier. Now we've got the Flesh Golem. You can't say Frankenstein. It's actually called Flesh Golem. Although I'm pretty sure that this, the name of this Flesh Golem is called Frankie. Ironically enough. I love this guy. As a single barrack unit that has the capability of dealing splash damage, gets up to, I think, like medium armor, decent amount of health, and damage. This guy is disgusting at max here. Absolutely worth every penny of gold. That you spend on him. The only problem is that he is a little bit of expensive. Uh, he is a little expensive. Excuse me. To max out. But personally in terms of design and everything. I'd say he's amazing. Do I think he's as busted as Mithril Jacket? No. He's a little bit weaker than that. I'm going to go ahead and put him at S tier. The next two abilities are going to be somewhat controversial. Because I can already tell. Pe people are going to hate where I rank this. But. I'm going to explain why. If you want to listen, go ahead. If you don't, well, suck it. Um, Snapdragons. So the whole purpose behind these things to begin with is for stalling. Now, if you don't have any barracks available for some odd reason, if you're doing a challenge, okay, I understand that. You want a little extra besides just your reinforcements or hero. That's fine. That's all well and good. That's understandable. But that being said, if we're just talking in terms of vanilla gameplay, this is one of the worst upgrades that you can get. I don't care about Bandersnatches. I really seriously don't. Just get Wild Magus. Get the insta-kill. Hell, if, if you don't want to do that, just upgrade your barracks. Just get multiple barracks. They attack very, very slowly. It's pretty easy to micro your hero or even just barracks out of the way of their, their melee attacks. Or the Areola attack that they do afterwards. You know, the buffed version of that. I obviously know that every attack they do is early all the damage but still 
Snapdragons. That being said, these guys suck. Not only in terms of price, but even from the get-go, they, they don't stall that much. You're paying, like, upwards of, you know, a couple hundred gold to hatch these things, and another couple hundred gold just to get them to stall. They only stall for up to, I believe it's, like, 1.5 and then 2 seconds per tier for the other ability that they get, which is Harder Crystals. That's this one here. So we're going to probably rank both of these in the same tier. But my question is, for all of that gold, why would you not just buy a barracks? 90 to 100 gold to put down a barracks, unless you have max star upgrades. It's cheaper, but still. I think this is terrible. F tier for both of these. Does not do its job very well. Oh yeah, and it's also very short range too. I'm not sure if that Loch Ness looking monster in the middle of the uh, Crystal Lake also affects this tower. If it can freeze the dragons and prevent them from freezing anybody. Maybe it affects them, maybe it doesn't. I mean, they are flying units. I have no idea. But in any case. Next up, let's talk about the gnomes. The first upgrade, XP Alidocious. There was a uh, mouthful for you. Try saying that fast three times. Basically, it increases the number of gnomes that are allowed to play tricks on enemies in the level known as the Unseelie Court. Pretty cheap to upgrade and max out. I'd say it's worth it because it's a passive tower. Again, if you don't really have a lot of other ways of, uh, you know, dealing some tricks to enemies or just abilities in general, it's a decent ability, I'd say. Not great, not insane, but it's decent. I'm going to put it at B tier. The next one, on the other hand, is going straight into A tier. For 600 gold, the gnomes basically gain three different attacks in their repertoire. Poison, teleportation, and disintegration, which is an insta-kill. That is pretty awesome. It also allows them to uh, get some gold back from enemies, some additional gold. So they basically can end up paying themselves off, which is pretty nice, in my personal opinion. So definitely A tier for these guys. Next up, we have Lifesteal. From the uh, Renegade post in the final level of the main campaign of Kingdom Rush Origins. I'd say this is decent. Definitely helps against certain enemy types, such as the Driders in that level. Is it busted? I guess it depends on if you get the other ability upgrades. If it's just this ability on its own, it's okay. It's not great. It would be probably B tier. But because of how well it synergizes with the other abilities for that tower, I'm going to say it's a lot stronger than what most people would probably put it at. I'd say A tier. You could also argue S just because of the prolonged you know, healing factor. But And again, this is while they're attacking too. So... I don't know, maybe you could argue S. But I'm going to leave it at A. I don't think it's game-breaking. It's very strong, but I don't think game-breaking. Next up, though, yeah, this one... <laughs> this one is pretty much game-breaking. So instead of throwing one dagger, now the Renegade Post has a ranged attack. They throw two daggers on every attack instead of one. And like I mentioned, this really synergizes well with the lifesteal upgrade, so it basically increases the effectiveness of this by double. Which is absolutely insane. Blade Mail. This ability I have mixed feelings about. It's okay. I'm not in love with it. It is relatively cheap. All things considered. And I don't think it's game breaking. I'm going to go ahead and put this at B tier. Excuse me, I didn't mean to open that menu. Next couple of abilities are going to be very, very difficult to rank. Young Ashbite. All of his abilities deal true damage, by the way. So both the Fiery Mist and the Flame On. These things just deal absolutely stupid amounts of uh, true damage. And the second ability has the ability to slow down enemies. Absolutely game-breaking. And he trivializes the level that he's in. Not to mention, just Young Ashbite by himself, his basic attacks too are pretty darn, uh, pretty darn frog and strong. But with these two abilities in his repertoire as well, with them being as cheap as they are to max out, not to mention their cooldown difference between using the, both of the abilities is literally two seconds. The first one, I believe, is 10. The second one is 12. Maybe flip-flop them. I forget which one is which specifically. But it's 10 and 12 seconds, respectively, for either one of the two. Absolutely just game-breaking. Razor Stars. So this is for the Dwarven Bastion. 
that appears in the level known as Caladrian's Wall, if I remember the name correctly. Uh, and increases the damage. Now, unlike the Sunray Tower, the reason we're including this one, because this one's kind of interesting. Unlike the Sunray Tower, that tower, or at least one of those elven bastions, whatever you want to call these things, basically um, disappears halfway, or maybe a third of the way through the start of Galadrian's Wall. I think it's like after wave five, there's an old burner that comes and destroys the bottom one. The top one stays throughout the rest of the level, if I remember correctly. Um, but the reason that, you know, we're including this one on the list as opposed to the Sunray Tower's regular upgrade attacks, um, yeah, it's, it's because of the fact that one of them is destroyed later on, kind of decreasing the efficiency overall of both those two bonus secondary towers, if you will. But basically, I mean, again, like the Mithril Hammers, it's, like, slightly better than this, I would say. It's not great. Actually, I'm thinking about bumping this down to C tier, because not only is it more expensive, but it's just, it doesn't provide that much value. So we'll say C tier for this. This is probably a stronger version of the Mithril Hammers. I'm going to go ahead and put that at B tier. Webbing. Basically provides slowing to all enemies from the spider tower that appears in the Silver Oak Forest level in Kingdom Rush Vengeance, the main campaign. I mean, it does slow enemies by a decent amount, I would say. Not crazy, but it's it's respectable. Do I think it's a necessity to beat the level? Absolutely not. You can absolutely do without this. It is nice to have, though, and it's pretty cheap to get. So with that being said, I would say, as far as how much of a difference it makes, I mean, I guess if you're doing a challenge, this could be a game breaker. I'm going to say B tier. The extra spider eggs. This is the final ability on this list. Basically allowing the matriarchs to spawn up to three spiderlings at once. Now, that's all well and good. You might think to yourself, okay, well, you have extra gnomes, you have extra spiders. What makes this any better than the gnomes? Honestly, I'd say that they're actually on the same par with each other. I'm going to go ahead and put this at A tier. And I'm going to explain why real quick. The reason being, the spiders in Kingdom Rush Vengeance that spawn in are pretty strong in and of themselves. They have a decent amount of health. Granted, it deteriorates, but what really makes these things broken is their damage. I believe in melee combat, they deal like 30 to 50 damage, which for the price that you're paying to get extra eggs and therefore extra damage and spiders on the battlefield, not to mention blocking enemies, you're right, because it's uh, technically a barracks unit, it's just broken, at least in my own personal opinion. You could argue S tier, but frankly... I, I still think that you can complete the level without this, so therefore it does lose a couple points for that. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final look of the secondary tower abilities tier list. Uh, please let me know what you guys prefer or like or dislike about this down in the comment section below. Just keep in mind that the way that I ordered the tier list as far as the tiers are concerned, that's my own personal preference. If you don't like that, make your own tier list. Name the tiers whatever you want. I don't care. That's your tier list at that point. That's the whole point of a tier list. It's yours. So if you don't like somebody else's, well, you chose to click on the video. In any case, I will hopefully see you all in the next YouTube video. This is Pollux the Wise. Peace out.